Now we're going to talk about malware. Malware is the all-encompassing term that refers to all of the programs that are written with malicious intent. So malware can include lots and lots of things. We'll go through some of the main ones and then we'll talk about the ones that you need to be of particular concern with at the moment. So top of the list you have macro viruses. This is a virus that has been written in a macro language such as VBS that is usually platform independent since many applications allow macro programs to be embedded in the documents, the programs may be run automatically when that document is open. So that means, for example, Word documents and Excel documents will have embedded macros and VBS scripts, which can run these macro viruses. You have stealth viruses, a virus that hides the modifications it has made. The virus tries to trick antivirus software by intercepting its request to the operating system and providing false and bogus information. Polymorphic viruses produces varied but operational copies of itself. A polymorphic virus may have no parts that remain identical between infections, making it very difficult to detect directly using signatures in antivirus software. You have self-garbling viruses, which attempt to hide from antivirus software by modifying its code so that it does not match predefined antivirus signatures. You have bots or zombies, and that's really a collection of hacked devices under a command and control of a hacker. So if your machine does get compromised, um, it, it could be part of a bot network or being a zombie. You have worms. These are viruses that simply spread from one machine to another, to another, to another. You have rootkits. Rootkits are the worst software-based malware that you can get. They are usually embedded into the kernel of the operating system, so it can hide um, its existence completely from the operating system. And then you have firmware rootkits. These are the worst of all. So, for example, within your hard drive's firmware chip, you could have some sort of malware. Even formatting your drive and reinstalling the operating system won't shift it. This is NSA GCHQ level malware, but saying that, there has been some talk and some papers um, about how this is done, so it is likely that there are hacking groups actually doing this. You have key loggers. Key loggers do as they sound, they log your keystrokes. And there's Trojan horses. Trojan horses are simply programs that appear to be one thing that are actually malware. So you download, say for example, a piece of software and it acts as that software, but at the same time, it is also a malware in the back. You have remote access tools or rats. These are malicious programs that run on your system and allow intruders to access your system remotely. So they're like a remote administration tool. If you're familiar with things like TeamViewer, it's um, TeamViewer for the hacker. It's a remote access tool. And uh, popular ones at the moment are Havix, Alien Spy, Comrat. These can be bought and these can also be downloaded. Even though we've gone through all of those different types, it's not really necessary for you to know every type of malware. You just need to know of them. Those that I will draw specific attention to are particularly prevalent at the moment. And the first of those is ransomware. This typically takes the form of malware taking control of your PC in some way, then behind the scenes covertly encrypting all your personal files with a decryption key only the hacker knows. Then when it's done, you'll get a message something like these. Crypto wall, CBT locker, torrent locker are the most prevalent at the moment. Your options are to pay the ransom, attempt to crack the encryption, which has had minor success so far, or lose the files. Most people pay, they tend to keep the amount relatively low so that people do tend to pay, and you're paying via a cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, which is relatively untraceable.
ransomware because of its high margin profits and rather simple chain of people that need to be involved will likely surge in the near term for PC users. Next, and of great concern, is malvertisement. Malvertisement is an online advertisement that is infected with a virus or malware. Online, there are a number of major and minor advertisement networks that exist. Yahoo is an example of one. People pay to place ads. And these ads will appear on thousands of different websites. The owners of the sites often don't even know what these specific ads will be. Hackers are now placing their own ads that contain scripts. To get around security checks, these scripts point to other scripts which download other scripts from another location and repeat this process a few times until finally malware is presented to the user of the website. Because of this chain of scripts from different changing locations, it's hard to know for the advertising network that the ad is bad. And many of these ads are placed through automated processes anyway. Sites themselves can have their own advertisement network too, such as Forbes, which also hosted malware recently. So malvertisement is a growing attack vector that you need to be aware of. And then we have drive-by attacks, which is really a bit of a strange name to be given for simply visiting a website that contains code to exploit your machine. So don't think that going to only known websites will keep you safe. The example of malvertisement is one reason why. And also, you need to consider if the website itself has been compromised. So here is an example of the UK fat tongue chef Jamie Oliver's website being hacked for the third time, infecting his surface for the benefit of the um, hacker that hacked him. 